ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل ولا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما we start as we always do first and foremost by praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing him our utmost gratitude and appreciation and on this beautiful special day of Friday we bear witness and we testify that there is nothing worthy of our worship of our unquestioned devotion except the one true God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mighty majestic perfect is he and that he sent Muhammad as our prophet as our messenger as our role model and guide so we ask Allah to bless protect, honor, and compliment him, his family, his followers, his companions, and everyone that follows the way until the end of time. May Allah include us from amongst them. Allah, he reminds us throughout the Quran, believers, have the taqwa of Allah. Shield yourself, protect yourself from the anger of Allah by obeying him and doing what he tells you to do. And don't die except that you are submitting to Allah. And again, he reminds us, believers, have the taqwa of Allah. Shield and protect yourself from the fire of hell by obeying the commandments of Allah and staying away from his prohibitions and speak the truth. Whoever has these two qualities of taqwa and speaking the truth, Allah will forgive your mistakes. Allah will corrects, correct and mend your actions. Whoever then truly obeys Allah and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, may Allah bless and protect him, will have the true victory in this life and in the life to come. One of the things that Allah He reminds us about over and over in the Quran is that He knows everything. He knows everything and you cannot challenge His knowledge. Allah, He tells us in one of uh, uh, the most beautiful exposés of His greatness, He tells us at the beginning or in the middle of Surah Al-Ra'ad, Allah يَعْلَمُ مَا تَحْمِلُ كُلُّ أُنثَى وَمَا تَغِيضُ الْأَرْحَامُ وَمَا تَزْدَادُ That Allah knows what every pregnant woman has inside of her and how the child can grow and decrease and the time that it takes for a mother to give birth. وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِمِقْدَارُ Every single aspect, every single thing in creation, Allah has given it its set decree, its set time, its set amount. Nothing is out of order. Nothing happens even a microsecond before Allah has decreed it to do so. Why? He is the knower. He knows everything about what can be seen and even what cannot be seen. Al-Kabir Al-Muta'al, the one who is the greatest, the one who is the most supreme, the one who is so lofty and high. And so he reminds us, سَوَاءٌ مِّنْكُمْ مَنْ أَسَرَّ الْقَوْلِ وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ وَسَارِبٌ بِالنَّهَارِ It doesn't make a difference whether you try to hide and keep secrets or whisper or whether you're outside in the public on a microphone. It doesn't make a difference. He knows it. And it doesn't make a difference وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ If you try and do something secretly in the depths and the darkness of the night, he knows it. And if you do something publicly during the day, he also knows it. You cannot hide from him. Every human being has angels that take shifts during the night and day. All of us have angels that guard and watch in front of us, behind us, left and right. They are watching us by the command of Allah. They are recording our deeds by the command of Allah. And they protect us from whatever bad could befall us. And as a result of all of this knowledge, all of this power, all of this control, Allah knows what you and I do. And so He's not going to change. He's not going to fix. He's not going to improve. And He's also not going to worsen and make more difficult the situation of any group of people unless they themselves change. 
If you want Allah's blessings to continue to be on you, then you need to keep doing what you're doing in terms of goodness. And if you want Allah to remove the difficulty and to remove the burden, then you need to change something. You need to fix something. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ And if Allah sees that you are no longer being grateful, that you are no longer being appreciative of your blessings, you are no longer obeying Him, and He decides to inflict His justice on you, no one can stop it. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِبْوَالٍ No one is going to be there to protect you. Allah, He knows everything. Allah, He knows the resilience and the iman and the tawakkul and the trust that our brothers and sisters in Palestine have. He knows it without a shadow of a doubt. And He knows the atrocities and He knows the oppression and He knows the murder and massacre of the ITF because they're not defending anything, rather they're terrorizing. He knows all of it. He knows all of it, in and out. And he wants to see, are the people in Palestine who have been resilient in their iman, are they going to continue? But for us, are we going to improve ourselves? Are we going to better ourselves in a show of solidarity to express our desire to help them? Are we going to become better? I'm not saying that they are in this situation because of our faults. But I'm saying if I improve, if I become a better Muslim, then maybe my efforts will have a better chance of helping. If I improve, maybe my efforts will have a better chance of helping. If I give one dollar and my intention is sincere and I earn that money in the most pure way and I donated it in the most beautiful way I could, Allah can make that one dollar be like that seed He mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah that that one dollar becomes like 700 seeds. If my actions are good, but if, my, if I'm filthy inside, if I do not obey Allah, if I'm not good to the people around me, if my iman is so weak that I give a million dollars, Allah can make that one million not even reach. If I do not improve myself, how can I expect to help someone else? If I can have everybody squeeze in. And if there's red space, you see red carpet, please squeeze in and please take that space. I need to improve. I need to fix myself. If I want my dua to be answered, I don't just... Act like the same human being that I am. If I know my life is filled with impermissible actions, if I know I live a life that is in the disobedience of Allah, and I beg and I raise my hands and I say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. And Allah says, you didn't even try to fix yourself. You are still living the same life with sins, with mistakes, with greed, with hatred, with animosity, with backbiting with lying and cheating, forgetting to pray, forgetting to be courteous to your family. Why would I listen to you? So if I want to help and make sure my help gets there, if I want to do something that I hope Allah will accept and make my tiny action reach over there to be a source of help and aid and victory, what am I going to do? What am I going to do to improve myself? What am I going to do to improve myself? If I want to physically help out, if I want to help you carry water, and my back and I don't even my backpack has a hole in it. I can't help you carry water. I need to first fix my backpack so I can help you carry water. If my iman is lacking, I need to first improve my iman, be the best Muslim I can be, and then let me continue to help. Let me continue to help. And as we mentioned last time, and I think this is one of the most beautiful ayat to remind us, when we don't know what to turn to, because guess what, for the past two months, have you really heard a khutbah that was that different? Have you really heard a khutbah that was that different? Have I given a khutbah that was really that significantly different? All we are doing is reminding one another about the guidance Allah has given us in the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is our source of strength. And this is exactly what Allah he tells us. فَإِمَّا نَذْهَبَنَّ بِكْ فَإِنَّا مِنْهُمْ مُنْتَقِمُونَ O my Prophet, and as a result, believers by extension, if I was to take your soul and uh, t make you die, before you see how I deal with the oppressors, فَإِنَّا مِنْهُمْ مُنْتَقِمُونَ No doubt I am fully able and fully capable of extracting my revenge against them. You may not live long enough to see it. As we have seen, how many of our brothers and sisters, and even people here have not lived long enough to see the victory come. 
But Allah, he also says, oh, Or we will show you the punishment we have promised them. We will let you live long enough to see how we will deal with them. Because we're completely capable. You think they can stop us? Nobody can stop me because this is Allah. But in the interim, what do I do? In the interim, what do I do? I, everything that your khatib tells you, everything that someone online is going to tell you, every article someone writes, every motivational speech someone gives, every heartwarming, tear-filled, fiery speech someone can give is all going to go back to the Qur'an. Fastamsik. When you don't know what to do, when you've been crying for two months, when they have been worried for over 80 years, stick to, hold on to, grab on to, adhere to, cling to what has been revealed to you. Stick to and do not let go of the Qur'an. Because really, again, and I remind you and I remind yourself, myself, when we get these iman highs, when our dua is pouring out, when we are in the middle of it on the streets, what is the thing going in our hearts? This is Allah. This is what Allah wants me to do. This is the guidance from Allah. This is the strength from Allah. This is the victory from Allah. It is us simply clinging to the Qur'an. If you stick to, if you adhere to, if you live by the Qur'an, you will be on the straight, guided, upward, correct path. And what is the Qur'an? What was revealed to you and I? It is a reminder. It is here to remind us. When we are in it, when we're in the zone, when we are pumped, Qur'an is here to give us the guidelines. This is how you maintain and move forward. When we're crying and we don't know what to do, we feel like we have no energy, we feel like we have no options. The Qur'an comes and tells us, you will be strong in alone in kuntum mu'mineen. If you are true believers, Allah will give you supremacy and greatness. The Qur'an is here to remind you and I. The Qur'an is here to give you and I strength. The Qur'an is here to be the guiding light that encourages us, that, that, that pushes us, that encourages us, that grounds us. And you're going to be asked, what did you do? You had this Qur'an in front of you. Did you take the guidance from it? You had this Qur'an in front of you. Did you read from it? And this Qur'an is so powerful, but we as Muslims, we often neglect it. And I remind us, Ramadan is less than three months away. If you want a better Ramadan, connect with the Qur'an now. How is it that non-Muslims, how is it that non-Muslims see the resilience of the Muslims in Palestine and they, as non-Muslims, kuffar, they open up and read a translation of the Qur'an and they become guided to Islam. Muslims, Open up and read the Qur'an and become guided. Gain that strength. If a non-Muslim becomes a Muslim by reading the Qur'an in this time, I will go from an average Muslim to a phenomenal Muslim. I will go from a weak Muslim to being a strong Muslim. I will go from a Muslim filled with doubts, filled with anxiety, filled with worries, not knowing what to do. And I will be a Muslim filled with strength and yaqeen and tawakkul, reliance on Allah, unwavering belief. Open up the Qur'an. فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ Hold on to it. Read it. Recite it. Understand it, learn it, and you will gain the mindset to continue forward. You will gain the heart to move forward. You will gain the wisdom to move forward. It's not me telling you this, it is Allah telling you this. And again, if you what bigger boost can I if a non-Muslim can open it up and be guided and gain strength and gain faith? What about you and I? What about you and I? And ask yourself, I will ask myself in the past two months, what ayat were there that I read and I thought about that made me think and reflect? When we read Surah Al-Hashr, go and read Surah Al-Hashr. I believe Surah 59, don't quote me on that. Go and read it. This will give you an iman boost. That, you, that they say, that they, you think that they are all together. But Allah knows that they are all split up and broken. And Allah is showing us day by day their weakness. 
Read Surah Al-Buruj, Allah will tell you what happens to those people that test believers. Read Surah Al-Feel, many of us we know Surah Al-Feel. أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ أَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ كَيْدَهُمْ فِي تَضْلِيلِ When they tried, when Abraha tried to attack the house of Allah, Allah made them like chewed straw. Nothing. If they continue, if the ITF continues, we will see how Allah will deal with them. We will see how Allah will deal with them. It's not, this is Allah. So gain strength from the Qur'an. Gain confidence from the Qur'an. And as the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, but what does it mean to be a strong believer, a, convi- a believer with conviction? When we read the Quran, our strength will grow. And he tells us, A strong believer, a believer whose iman is at 110%, a believer who has full trust in Allah, a believer who knows that when they do, Allah is there watching, a believer who puts their efforts in Allah, a believer whose faith, whose iman is unshakable. They are better and more beloved to Allah than a weak believer, than a believer who's unsure, than a believer who's wavering, than a believer who has doubts, than a believer who's putting their hopes in themselves. Be a strong believer. Be a strong believer. Increase your iman, increase your good deeds. But there's good in both because there's still iman in there. And he tells us, how do you become stronger? How do you become al-mu'min al-qawi? Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Desire, go after, seek that which will benefit you. Benefit you in this life, but more importantly in the hereafter. If I seek the material of this world, yeah, it will benefit me, but it's not going to benefit me in the hereafter. Do those things that will benefit actually, in reality, But guess what? Life has challenges, doesn't it? There are ups and downs. So when you go after those things that will benefit you, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجِزْ أَوْ وَلَا تَعْجِزْ Then seek help in and with Allah and don't be weak. Don't be incapable. Don't fall short. If you have a goal, I'm going to put up this many flyers, Go and put up that many flyers. If you say, I'm going to show up to Fajr every single morning so I can take part in Dua Qunut, do it, wake up and go. Is my Dua alone better? Or my Dua taught to me by the Prophet ﷺ in Jama'ah, in Qunut, of Fajr better? Get up and go. Get up and go. And I'm telling you, get up and go. Then I, I, I... This will slightly contradict what I'm about to say. But what would happen if we had this many people in Fajr at every masjid, every single morning in Dua Qunut? You tell me. You tell me. And so, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجِزْ Seek help from Allah, continue doing what you're going to do. Don't be weak, don't be incapable. And guess what? If something bad happens, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَانَ كَذَا وَكَذَا Don't say, if only we did that. If only we had Muslims in high places. If only we had more money. If only we had more people in politics. If only this, if only that. Don't get involved in that. The past has happened. Learn from it and what are you going to change? If all I do is stuck in, if only we did this, if only we weren't colonized. Yes, that's huge problems. But we have a problem to fix right now. We can learn from the past. We can evaluate history. But move forward. What am I going to do to fix it? And when you face a calamity, قُلْ قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ This was the decree of Allah. And whatever He wanted to do, He's going to do. And that's what it is. And that's what it is. But am I going to do whatever is in my power? Am I going to do whatever is in my power? And the last thing that I will end on, when we try to improve ourselves, we think about ibadah in worship. We think about us praying more. We think about us reading more Quran. We think about us making more dua, about uh, uh, being more charitable, about fasting. Do all of these things. And we also think about our activism, being on the streets, talking to our politicians, reaching out, putting money where our mouth is. Both of these are great. But I ask us one more way of us to improve ourselves. One more way for us to be grateful and to not feel guilty. And that is when we see how many things our brothers and sisters have lost. And they did not take them for granted. So when you know 
how many mothers have been killed and massacred. When I go home today, I will be good to my mom. When I know how many fathers have been massacred, I will go home and I'll be good to my dad. When I know how many brothers and sisters have been killed, how many people are holding their relatives in their hands, I will go home and I will be the best husband, I will be the best wife, I will be the best mother, I will be the best father, I will be the best son, the best daughter, the best cousin, the best uncle, aunt, grandparent, because I will appreciate these blessings that I have. When I eat food, I will be grateful. When I drink clean water, I will say Alhamdulillah after like I've never said Alhamdulillah before. Thank you Allah for giving me clean water when they don't have clean water. Be grateful for these blessings. Don't just sit there and be like, oh, it's bad for them. And then you eat your fancy meal. Be grateful. Be grateful. If, if they have taught us nothing but gratitude, if they have taught us nothing but ihtiram and ni'mah, then follow suit in that. They have showed us how to be grateful, how to venerate blessings. Be grateful for the blessings that you have. Pray harder than you've ever hard prayed harder than you've ever prayed before. Make dua like you've never made dua before. Speak up and post and share like you've never posted before. Care for your family like you've never cared before. Read and connect with and stick to the Quran like you've never read the Quran before. Open up the Quran like those people who became Muslim. Open up the Quran and take guidance from it like all of those people that became Muslim. Open it up. And your strength, your iman, your tawakkul, your conviction in Allah, your trust in Allah, your energy, everything will go up. Because it is coming from Allah. And as the Prophet ﷺ taught us, what happens is not from me and you. It is from Allah. So gain help from Allah, gain encouragement from Allah, and the help and the victory and the change will come from Allah, not you and me. I will do what is in my power, and I will do what is in my power to the best of my ability. But the on-the-ground reality will take place when Allah says so. And when I think, when is it going to come? And when I think, when is it going to come? Allah, He already told me, Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. The help and victory of Allah is close. Stick to the Qur'an. فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ Stick to the Qur'an, gain guidance from the Qur'an, grow from the Qur'an, improve from the Qur'an, be al-mu'min, al-qawi, a strong believer in and with and through the Qur'an. Barakallahu feekum, aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa risa'i al-muslimin, fa astaghfiru, fa inna al-ghafur rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد والله we ask you to bless protect honor and compliment our beloved prophet our messenger our Lord Muhammad رسول الله his family friends companions and everyone that follows the way until the end of time ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. اللهم ادخلنا جنتك جنة الفردوس الأعلى بغير حساب ولا عذاب ما حبيبك ورسولك اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم بدل سيئاتنا كلها حسنات Allah, we ask you for the best in this life, the best in the hereafter. Protect us from the punishment of the hereafter and enter us into your gardens of paradise without any questioning and punishment alongside your messenger. Allah, forgive us. Forgive all of the believing men and women until the end of time. Allahumma ansur ikhwanina fi Philistine. Allah, give them your help. Give them your aid. Give them your victory. Allah, give them strength. Allah, pour down patience and strength and steadfastness upon them. Allah, accept their martyrs. Allah, deal with those that oppress them. Allah, deal with those that oppress them. Allah, deal with those that oppress them. Allahumma منصرهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم ولا تكلهم إلى أنفسهم طرفة عين اللهم زدهم عددا وعددا اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم أفرغ عليهم صبرا وقوة واستقامة اللهم ثبت أقدامهم اللهم ثبت أقدامهم اللهم كن لهم ناصرا ومعينا ومؤيدا وظهيرا وعليك بمن بغى عليهم اللهم عليك بالصهاينة الغاصبين المعتدين الظالمين لا تجعلنا من الظالمين اللهم عليك 
عليك بهم ربنا لا تذر على الأرض للصهاينة ديارا صب عليهم سوط عذاب أرسل عليهم عذابك إرمهم بعذابك اجعلهم كعصف مأكول اللهم عليك بهم اللهم عليك بهم اللهم عليك بهم اللهم أعيد المسجد الأقصى إلى أيد المسلمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أقيم الصلاة